Call to order the regular scheduled council meeting for Monday, June 20th, 2016 at 7 p.m. Mr. Collier. Mayor Lowry. Here. Mr. McIntyre. Here. Mr. Reynolds. Here. Mr. Lindsay. Here. Mr. Rick Lowry. Here. Mr. McLaughlin. Here. Mr. Craybar. Here. All members present. Thank you, sir. Uh, tonight we'll stand. We'll have the invocation by Councilman Bill McIntyre. <laughs> Let us pray. Lord, we come to you today in a time of great tragedy. Um, we know that what happened in Orlando was, was horrible, and it was the worst shooting, mass shooting in American history, and also the worst terrorist attack since September the 11th, 2001. We ask that you can use your almighty power to heal the hearts of those in this country who feel hate, regardless of race, creed, religion, gender, or sexual orientation. May we all be able to come together and live as Americans. And please uh, help us in this summer so that we can stay safe and our children stay safe out in the heat, out in the sun, and with all the bad influences that may happen, uh, this small town is a great place to live. And please guide its citizens so that we can come together and be a great place here in New Carlisle. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 So we'll do the pledge tonight. We'll use the flag in the back, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we'll move forward with uh, any actions on the minutes of regular council meeting. So move. Thank you, Thank you. Sir. Thank you. <laughs> Second. Discussion? No. Good job. Thank you. Mr. McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. Craybacher? Abstain. Mayor Lowry? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. McIntyre? Abstain. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. The minutes pass. Oh, Mr. L Rick Lowry? Yes. Sorry, I almost missed it. <coughs> the minutes pass 5 0 to abstain. Thank you, sir. Uh, moving on to communications tonight. First up, we have Charles Patterson from the Clark County Combined Health District going over the Zika virus and the health level. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Um, we have begun to talk more and more about the Zika virus, and we have response plans in place if we were to get someone uh, in our communities that have Zika virus. Um, I've dropped some paperwork off with Mr. Bridge. Uh, that would be a memorandum of understanding between the health district and the city of New Carlisle. Um, the attorneys are still working over the fine print, and so this will come to you over your next several meetings. What, you're, what we're asking you to consider is uh, consider the memorandum, which is an agreement between us, so that we would be able to come to your public places, um, including the right-of-ways, and either put larvicide down to kill larvae that are in standing water or that we would be able to do adulticide if that were necessary. Now we don't have plans to do major adulticide. First of all, it's very expensive and it's not nearly as effective as the larvicide. Uh, in addition to that, um, the plan that we've been given by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is to, if, if there's a person identified with Zika, is that we're actually going to try to keep the mosquitoes that are around those people from biting them. So we're trying to actually protect the mosquitoes from the Zika as opposed to the people because if, if we stop the spread from the infected person to a mosquito, then the mosquitoes can't in turn bite someone else and infect them with the virus. Um, so it's about a, uh, if we have a, a case, uh, the recommendation is that we go in about a hundred meter radius of that residence to make sure that we're, we're walking, we're knocking on doors, we're walking with people in their backyards, we're looking for containers that may contain uh, water, bird bath that's not regularly maintained, um, all the things we should be doing every day, but we're gonna be looking very closely at that. We're also gonna be potentially putting down larvicide and adulticide in those areas uh, where we know that in fact there is a, a known Zika case out there. 
Now, we don't have any cases in Clark County. We've not had any so far. We hope to keep that record for many, many months to come. But we do need to make sure that we begin to put these plans in place in case we were to get a traveler from uh, South or Central America or even the Southern United States that were to pick the Zika virus up and bring it back here. We do want to make sure that we can protect the other residents from that exposure. And so that's the main reason why we're asking you to consider over your next several meetings this memorandum of understanding. Uh, like I said, uh, the lawyers are working on the fine print, um, but that should be to you in a, in a couple of weeks for your consideration. We'll be happy to, to specifically answer any questions about that memorandum or any questions you have about <coughs> Zika, we can, we can address those at Mr. this time. Uh, Mr. McLaughlin. I do have, a, a Mr. Patterson, a question. Cost-wise, is this going to be built right into our levy as far as the cost to the city of New York? Right. At this point, we believe that the, the contract that we have with you, we're going to use those funds to make sure that we're able to do this. Now, if, if at a later date we have a widespread outbreak or something, then that's going to quickly overwhelm the resources that we have. But right now, the, the memorandum that we have is at no cost to, to you to do that. It's just an agreement to allow us to come. Let's say that we had a, an issue near the park here, that we would be able to come and work in the park because you own that or have the right of way for that. So um, that's what the agreement really is. It, there's not a monetary uh, transaction at this time from that agreement. Thank you, sir. Clear that. Um, Mr. Patterson, uh, I have a small pond like in our my backyard and my wife loves lily pads and uh, so but it, once a summer we put this stuff in it to kill larvae, mosquito larvae and that's similar to what you're talking about and, and how often do you would you have to do it? Well it, it obviously depends on the amount of water flow. Uh, but in a pond area or in, a, in ditches where we don't have water sweeping it away, you can have one application that will last three months or so of the larvicide. The, the particular uh, larvicide that we use, it, it's a pellet. It looks like right. rabbit feet almost. Exactly. Uh, we put those pellets down and they'll activate when they're wet. If that, let's say it's a, it's a dry creek, so it dries up, they'll still sit there until it gets wet again, then they'll reactivate. So that's why we have about a three month window on that uh, to make that happen. No. Uh, we prefer to use the larvicide because it's much better for insects. I mean, imagine when we do adulticide, which is the mist. First of all, we don't want everybody to have to breathe that. It's, it's, it's a very low level chemical, but why breathe it if you don't have to, right? Uh, it's also very detrimental to your insects that are beneficial, like your bees, your honeybees. Uh, they don't tolerate that very well. And so we try to use the adulticide as little as possible. But if we do have a Zika case, we may have to, we may have to bring that out. And we'll be contracting for a, a company that does this every day to do this, because the calibration on those machines has to be very specific to get the right particulate size so that it doesn't stay float up in the air and go away, and it doesn't drop to the ground. So we are going to be using a, a, a licensed calibrated pest control operator for that. The larva side, our staff have, have pest control operator licenses by which they can do that. Uh, and they're the ones that came to us and said, we really need an agreement with, with all the townships, the villages, the cities, uh, to be able to go do that application in the right of ways in the public properties. So, Mr. Patterson, I personally live out close to the Twin Cities. Behind my house, when, when Honey Creek rises, there's a long channel, probably four foot wide, 75 foot long. When the creek goes down, that can sit there for 30 days, mosquitoes are working. Is there something I can put in there that will not be in violation of the EPA, or will not hurt the ground? Well, typically, that you can put out a larvicide. It's uh, any farm supply, you know, tractor supply, something like that has those. They're called dunks. They look like a donut. Okay. And you can put them in there and, and they're fine for that type. If you get flowing water, A, they're not going to work because they won't right. stay around. Right. Uh, and, and B, flowing water actually kills the mosquito larva because it tumbles the right. larva and they can't survive that. 
Okay. But that's what we recommend that people go look for is okay, mosquito dunks. What is the name dunk. of it again, sir? It, they're dunks, mosquito okay. dunks. Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate um, it. And you can get the, like I said, you can get them at Tractor Supply. I'm sure the newer, uh, what's the newer one on Upper Valley Pike now? Rural King. Rural King, they okay. have them. All right. uh, I'm sure you have a feed store here that would have uh, okay. have that as well. Farmers have used them for, for many, many years to Thank do you. that. The other thing we are looking for, we are looking for places to trap. So we're trying to trap all kinds of mosquitoes, not just the 80s that would carry the, the Zika virus. We're also trapping other mosquitoes this summer for West Nile virus, uh, for all kinds of other uh, St. Louis encephalitis, et cetera, that they can carry. And it's actually at this point a much higher probability of getting some other virus from a mosquito than, in fact, getting the Zika virus uh, just because of the type of mosquitoes we typically have here. Uh, so we may be calling on you later uh, for a place. The other thing this memorandum of understanding does is gives us the ability to go out and like put traps out in the park. So on your property that the, the, the city of New Carlisle owns, that we'd be able to go out there. The other thing in the MOU, it outlines that you would give us a contact person. So if you want it to be Mr. Bridge, or if you want it to be uh, uh, Mr. Long, or whoever, you've got going out there on a daily basis that we would contact them and say, okay, we're gonna be putting traps out at this location on Thursday evening. Uh, because we want you to know what's going on and we want to keep keep you abreast of the situation. Thank you. Excellent question. Mr. McIntyre. Sir, thank you for coming here today and talking about this. I, I know we've had in the U.S. there's been a few cases and that's from people traveling from Central and South America um, into the, the continental U.S. But I think over the weekend the CD, CDC said it's not a matter of if there'll be U.S. born cases but a matter of when. And I know there's things that we can all do to help fight the mosquitoes, like emptying out your bird baths, or if you have an old tire that would gain water, you dump that out because they like to get in there. Um, the larva side is interesting because that's a way to take care of the bigger issues that aren't just a bird bath or an old tire. I think one of the things people, a question that I can anticipate coming up with the use of larvicide is people want to know about the health effects of that. Um, if you have a pond or, or something and your dog may drink out of it occasionally or the effects on people. So I was wondering specifically, I'm not going to put you on the spot tonight to know the entire chemistry and biology of, of this larvicide, but in, in, the, in the memorandum of understanding, is it possible to include something like a fact sheet or whatever it may be about the dangers or safety um, with larvicide in, in respect to animals uh, who may drink the water or people uh, and whatever that is. Actually, that's a great idea. We'd be happy to put an appendix to that and attach that. Um, the larvicide that's used is a, is a pretty good chemical because it doesn't have lots of other toxic effects. So it's not going to kill fish. It's not going to kill uh, mammals or vertebrates uh, who are come in contact with it. Uh, and that's why it's important that that we use them according to the manufacturer's instructions or that our folks use them that are certified pest control operators because we only use them, A, where we have to, and we only use them at a very specified rate to keep those risks of human or animal exposure at a minimum to make sure that we don't have those uh, unfortunate incidents sure. that can occur when they're used improperly. Thank you. Mr. Lindsay, do you still have a question, sir? Uh, yes, sir. Mr. Patterson, you was talking about the pellets in the creek beds and whatnot and they was detrimental to other insects and bees and stuff. What about the wildlife or family pet or something would happen to eat one? Okay, so when I was saying that they were detrimental, I was talking about the adulticide, which is the mist that we spray okay. that, are, that can be damaging to the beneficial insects out there. Okay. Um, the actual larvicide itself doesn't typically harm a vertebrate. So any mammals, a family pet, something that would get that, they're not going to have uh, a bad reaction to that because it's going to be such a small amount. And that's why it's important that we apply it at the appropriate rate uh, per square foot or per cubic, or, I mean, per square meter to make sure that we don't over apply it and that there's a chance for, for over um, ingestion of that. Okay, thank you, sir. And you answered my second question, one in the process. Mr. Reynolds. Oh, has any other community 
partnered with you yet, or is this just the, the informal stage of just telling us what the plan is? Actually, uh, we're starting today. You're the first community that we've talked to about this. Tomorrow we're going to meet and talk with the City Commission in Springfield. On Wednesday we're meeting with the County Commission. And over the next three weeks we'll be meeting with every political jurisdiction, every, every village, council, every township trustee meeting uh, in the county uh, asking for the same thing. But just like you guys were the first to pass smoking, you just have our smoking ban out in the park here. You're also the first that are getting the, the request to consider this. So over the coming weeks, we will cover everybody and have all those requests. And I'm not asking you to even vote on this yet because you haven't seen the document. I'm just introducing it to you tonight, hopefully providing some education for you and your citizens about the Zika, where we are. And I'm sure we'll be talking about Zika virus more and more. Um, as Mr. McIntyre said that, you know, we're getting more and more cases. We're getting cases in Ohio. We've had multiple cases in Ohio already, none near us here in Clark County. Uh, but certainly, we're aware of it, and we're trying to make sure that we lay these plans ahead of time, uh, because it's not if we get a case, it's when we get a case. Uh, we have information going out to the, a new set of information that just came out after 5 o'clock tonight. I was sitting in the office and got more information from the Ohio Department of Health um, that we're sending out to physicians. We now have a protocol. We now have actual um, mosquito repellent that we're going to be requesting that the people, if we get someone with Zika, they're gonna be wearing long sleeves and long pants. They're gonna be putting on mosquito repellent to prevent the mosquitoes from biting them and then in turn flying away and potentially infecting someone else. Uh, the state's actually supplying that repellent to us. Uh, they've recently just uh, passed some changes with Medicaid so that uh, in folks that are on Medicaid will actually be able to get a prescription if they're diagnosed with Zika or possible Zika, uh, a prescription to go out and get that repellent as well at the local pharmacy. Um, there's a whole process by which we have to follow up if and when we get a case, and, and it's probably not if, it's when. All right, Mr. Lindsay. Follow-up question, sir. Do you know if the surrounding counties are doing the same uh, thing that you're talking about here? I know they're doing much similar, similar action as we are. Uh, Green County has had a mosquito district for years where they actually have trucks with the sprayers on them and they do that spraying. Uh, they do that under contract with all their villages and, and cities. So the townships, villages, and cities actually pay the health district to do that. Uh, we're hoping not to get to that point because we don't want to come to you and ask for money. We just want to come to you and ask for support so that we can take care of the issue uh, under our current contractual relationships. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Patterson. Also, just one more, and you touched on a little bit, and I think uh, uh, they had already touched on it a little bit, too, honeybees. I know you touched on it, but what overall is it a... Is it an issue? Is it going to be an issue for honeybees? The, the larvicide is certainly not an issue for the honeybees, which is why we prefer to use that. It's much more effective, and it's a it's a much better uh, per dollar investment in controlling uh, mosquitoes in general. Uh, the The honeybees are only effective when we have to do the adulticide, which is what why we choose not to do that as much as possible. But if we have a case of of actual Zika that we're protecting the residents, we have to weigh. Uh, you know, protecting the residents against Zika, which could cause birth defects right. uh, and other neurological things with the honeybees, which is why we would never anticipate coming into to New Carlisle and saying, okay, we're going to spray the whole city for adulticide on Saturday night. You know, we're just going to do the whole thing. Um, we only are going to use this in targeted areas to make sure that we do the, the best prevention for the citizens with the least amount of damage to the environment or, or other beneficial insects like the honeybees. So okay. um, that's why it's very targeted. The only thing we may do is um, we have this little thing called HIPAA that we have to be really careful of. And so what we can't do is we can't be so precise in our thousand meter spread that Sorry. the media could actually draw a line and go, we know that it's Right. It's Bill McIntyre's house, so he must be the guy or one of his family members has, has Zika. Um, we can't do that. That wouldn't be fair to, to the persons involved. And so we're, gonna, we're probably going to broaden that just enough at least to be able to, 
to not have a very clear uh, pinpoint star in the middle that people would violate the, the HIPAA violation. That's just what we can't have as a HIPAA violation. Right. Okay, thank you. Mr. Bridge, did you have any comments on this before we move on? I do not. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mr. Chief. Yeah, no, Chief. Uh, you said there was going to be a protocol that you guys are developing protocol for as far as physicians and everything else. Uh, is, is there going to be a protocol or at least something you're giving out to the EMS counties to know for them to start looking for or possibly site on calls? Because I know the Zika virus does give off some type of different signs and symptoms. Uh, is there going to be a protocol, anything given out to the EMS community to be able to watch before? I believe that our emergency preparedness quarter uh, coordinator was talking about that with Ken Johnson from the EMA just late this evening uh, before I left to figure out what we're going to get out there for the EMS Council. So uh, that is something that's being discussed at this time as well. It will be something more diagnosed and, and tested and treated in, in, the, hospital. in, the, in the doctor's office, most likely. Uh, but we still want to always keep our EMS informed of that. All right, anyone else? So slight, the only other thing is I have a couple extra copies. Uh, there is just a one pager on the community health improvement plan that we're actually at this point moving forward engaging on. Um, there's a website on here as well if you want to know a lot more stuff about it. I just wanted to take the moment to mention it to you um, that New Carolina is part of our community health improvement plan. Um, you know, on Saturday, there's the walk to Wellville, which is going to end up at the farmer's market. Uh, great farmer's market here. You guys should be really proud of uh, what's happening in a, in a community this size to have that farmer's market and have a place where your citizens can go get that fresh produce. We appreciate all of your support, all of the help that Mr. Bridge has given on that as well. So um, that is one of the pieces of this community health improvement plan is just getting people out, getting to enjoy the healthy foods, getting them out walking and exercising. So I did want to leave a copy with that issue, just make note of that. So if you at any time have any questions about that, feel free to contact me or my staff. We'll be happy to go over the entire community health improvement plan for you. Um, there we have work plans that are in place now. Um, and the document, the complete document should be finished by July 1st. So we're really excited about that. Uh, closing that chapter, that's three years of, of uh, work into the future that's scripted out within this plan for us to, to actually move the needle on the health of our community. And we appreciate your support in that um, with the other uh, things like the smoking ban in the park that you've recently done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. You Madison. We appreciate all the good work and uh, information. It's always I'll informative. Say one more thing. Mr. Bridge. Thank you for coming. Um, I, every day I'm impressed with you and your staff and what you do to better uh, the great city of New Carlisle. Uh, from the smoking resolution to that nice playground equipment we got out there to what you're doing to protect our citizens from secret virus. So uh, we definitely appreciate it. Keep up the great work. Thank you for your great work. Appreciate it. <clears throat> All right, moving on under uh, communications. Randy, I'm going to uh, miss uh, Chief Bear is not here, correct? Chief Bear of Two Worlds is not present today. All right, thank you. So we'll move on without that tonight. And we'll move on to Mr. Bridges' city manager report when you're ready, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Mike Lowry, Mayor. And <laughs> I thought said Lowell, Mayor. Uh, members of council, members of public, I'd like to share with you the city manager's report. Um, we'll start off with our finance discussion with our finance director, Ms. Colleen Harris. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Mayor, Council, and members of the public. The finance report for the month of May, our total revenue was $340,960.83. Our total expenditures for the month of May is $399,000. $442.91. That brings our year-to-date total revenue collected at $2,458,946.64. And our year-to-date expenditures is $1,607,437.78. And then keeping track of our general fund income tax, we took in to date $53,665.86 for a total year to date for the general fund income tax is $592,984.46. The half percent police income tax levy brought in for the month of May 
$832.93, and our year-to-date for the police half percent income tax levy is $277,000. $902.33. I also included for our first month of May our pool report. It seems to be an interesting topic. So we're going to do this every month. The revenue that the pool brought in, and it just started in May, so it's just getting underway, is $13,980.85. And the expenditures were $5,428.17. So at the end of May, we have a net profit of $8,552.68. Payroll will kick in for June, so it just got started. So I'll entertain any questions. Council, any questions for Ms. Harris? <coughs> no questions, thank you. Okay, Mr. Reynolds. Uh, in the check register, it was line 71796. I heard check register. I didn't hear the check oh, number. Sorry. All right. It's 71796, the Ohio Association of Public. I don't know what that was. Do you know? Cut off. Okay, you do. Let me have that check number one more time. I have a detailed report I brought with me. Oh, 71796? Uh, yes. Okay. Let's see if I can. Hard to remember them all off the top of my head. Oh, I would expect you to, that's for sure. <laughs> Annual membership for the Public Treasurer's um, Association. Okay. It's one of the ones that I've joined, so it's okay. $50 per year. I just was wondering because it, it was new, so. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Council, any other questions for Ms. Harris? All right, moving on. Thank you very much, Ms. Harris. We appreciate the report. Mr. Bridge. And moving on with the uh, city manager report, Mr. Kitko's on vacation. He will return on Wednesday. Uh, if you have any questions regarding Mr. Kitko's uh, area of expertise, I'm glad we get back to you on that. Uh, but in the meantime, moving on, planning and zoning discussion. I know a few weeks ago some council members had asked us about the sidewalk repair program. Uh, I told you that we're short staffed. I didn't see a lot of happy faces. So uh, because of that, I did instruct our code enforcement gym to go get some pictures. Uh, he just finished up the pictures, I think, today. Um, so I'm going to review those, make sure everything's correct, and we will be sending out letters similar to how we did the repair program up in Northwoods. Um, property violations are ongoing, so please, if you do notice high grass, trash, or any other property-related issues, please call the city building to report, and you are able to remain anonymous. And any questions on the planning and zoning? Mr. Mayor. Mr. McLaughlin. Right up from the city building, north of the city building, same side of the street, the house. Grass is this high. 317 Church. Uh, <coughs> We're already on that. Yep. yep. That was sent for a big I know those people just purchased that. Now They've been doing a lot of work trying to remodel it. Um, we've kind of let them slide on the remodeling aspects of it, but we're not going to let them slide on the grass. I haven't seen it went over there quite a while. Sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But it did go for abatement today. So it'll probably be cut sometimes this week. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Mr. Lindsay? Mr. Bridge, on the sidewalk repair that obviously needs to be done in the city, is there any way that the city can uh, like do a group co a contract or something? If we have 100 homeowners that does it all at one time, but we can maybe negotiate a lower price for it? How we did it with the, we don't get involved in pricing. That is up to the homeowner to take care of the project themselves. That's how we did it at Northwoods. They can take it upon themselves to call a company. We always tell them that it's cheaper to go in groups. But since we're not assessing any property taxes with it, we don't get involved in financing it. It's not a you have to do it or not. It's a general outreach. We don't have the money to go and fix all these sidewalks and assess taxes. <clears throat> so if they choose not to fix their sidewalks, their city isn't going to? No, that's exactly, how we did, that's exactly how we did the Northwoods. You'd be shocked as a surprise, though. You'd mm -hmm. be surprised with the response you get. Okay. We had a lot of people fix them in, up in Northwoods. All right. Thanks. Sure. And one last question. Mr. Reynolds. Are we going to waive that fee for the new section that we're doing, like we did with the last Oh, section? absolutely. Okay. Yeah, the fee will be sure. waived. If, if you do get your uh, sidewalk uh, done, we will waive the $20 fee. Absolutely. All right, because we did it for the last one. That's the yep. section. So we absolutely. Have the same offer. Sure. Mr. Lindsay, I do think that sure. uh, some people were like neighbors that were close around that yeah. had multiple sidewalks. I think they were getting together and they were getting like a discounted rate for yeah. Yeah. the and truck I'll, come out for like multiple houses yeah. on the same block. 
And we just want to alleviate any safety or <coughs> concern. So if your actual sidewall panels in one piece and maybe a root has grown up underneath it or some other force has kind of lifted it up, you're more than welcome to lift that panel up, level it out, and put it back down along with one piece. We just don't want somebody to trip or we want a wheelchair to be able to get over the hump. If it's in one piece, just level it out. There's no sense of paying to get a whole thing redone if it's still a good block. Uh, I've tried that. However, they break really easy when you, when yeah. you lay it back down. Sure. So you end up doing it anyway. Yeah. And I just want to say, Randy, uh, you know, it, it's it's a big safety issue. Sure. It really is because you know the kids riding a tricycle, they hit that thing and off and over they go. You know, um, what people don't understand is that you can be sued. You know, so we're saving you from a lawsuit. You know, a lawsuit would cost you a lot more than $200. You know, so, you know and that's what, you know, safety. Uh, there are people who actually do not want to walk on the sidewalks. I've talked to them when they come past my house, and they, they walk on the street. And I said, why? Because we don't want to trip. have a trip and have a hip, and they're elderly and everything else. Mm -hmm. So you know, we really need the, the safety of the people, you know. And, and uh, I've seen some. I saw those pictures. You, know, you and I saw those pictures. Sure. So, you know, there's some that are really high up. So, you know, looks like a drawbridge. The journal rule of thumb, when, when, when we did the Northwood project, I literally walked through the sidewalks. I literally walked and saw every single one. And the general rule I used was always like, <coughs> if it's more than a width of a, a, a thumbnail up, then that's a tripping hazard. And there's standards out there that everybody goes sure. by. Um, so if we're talking like that, you can probably get by. But if you like this, yeah. that's not acceptable. I've broken my toe before on the sure. sidewalks. Absolutely. Thank you, Fina. Thank you, Mr. Craybrock. Mr. Lynn. I'm good. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right. Any other questions? All right. Um, sir, I do have a, have a question on the check register, if I may. Yes, sir. Ms. Harris, uh, I think it's check number uh, 71776. For the HSA bank. bank. That's the monthly portion that the city pays to the ex, um, to the employees' um, HSA account, part of their medical plan, their benefit. Part of the health insurance. Is that on it's top of the, the yes. twenty-four thousand that I've seen? I don't know yeah. the exact numbers, but is that on top of that then? Yes. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Right. Mr. Bridge. Yeah, hey, moving on to the city manager report. Our fire discussion with the uh, fire chief, chief trustee, the mayor, <coughs> members of council, and the public. Good evening. Uh, for the fire division, the month of May, New Kalau Fire Division responded to 85 EMS calls in the city, 15 in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to, four, or excuse me, to 10 fire-related calls in the city and zero in Elizabeth Township. Our shoot time, which again, if people understand the shoot time, shoot time is how long it takes the medic, medic or apparatus to get out the door. Our average shoot time for May was uh, 107 seconds to be out the door. Um, we had three EMS calls answered either by Pike Township or Bethel Park due to our medic already being on a response. Uh, not in the report, but along with that, uh, during the month of May, uh, we responded to either Pike Township or Bethel Park Township three times in the month of May to uh, from initial aid to them because of their medic already being on a response. All of the hose, ladder, and SCBA testing has been completed for, with, for the year with all equipment passing without any problems. Uh, we're planning to do our pump testing for the apparatus probably in the next month. The week after the 4th of July weekend, the division will start flushing hydrants for the city. Um, there will be uh, notices put out through the paper and that type of thing of what areas we'll be in when we're doing them so that way people will know. Uh, it's just an annual thing that we need to get done with the hydrants. That way we know they're working. That way also we find ones that may not be working or stems may be broke or whatever. Uh, it's just a good maintenance pro uh, project for the division. On the EMS side of the house, Captain Geiselman, our EMS captain, has taught four CPR classes uh, for different groups in, in the city area. Uh, for a total right now of 30 people that she's taught at no cost to them, uh, the uh, division. Uh, basically, she's went to school, she's got the certification, she teaches the classes for free. Uh, firefighter Tony Settles, one of our uh, firefighters, has been on the division for a couple of years now, just passed his EMT. He is now a certified emergency medical technician, 
he'll move from the paid for call staff to the part-time program. Uh, we're still giving out smoke alarms. We have about 50 of those left for anyone that, that may be in need of one. On a sad note, we did not uh, get the large grant that we had put in for this year through the state fire marshal's office. Uh, the letter that I received back from them stated that funds had been exhausted before they got to us. So we'll try again <coughs> next year and keep trying for the ones that come down the pike that we can get. Uh, other than that, any questions for the, about the division? Mr. Lindsay. Chief, uh, I was just wondering, how do you come up with the date to start flushing hydrants? Uh, it's worked through the city building, for a while, and that's basically at the same time that we did it last year. So you've always done them on like July 4th, or started them that week? After the, yeah, the week after July 4th. Okay, and the captain doing the CPR classes, what is her certification then? Is it the Red Cross or? Red Cross. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah. Um, in the, you know, in our work session, we, you know, we were talking about Bethel Township, yes, sir. and they said that they kind of shut the doors, you know, for their fire department at six o'clock, and we do the, you know, we do the runs for them. No, that's right. No, that does that does not happen. No, sir. What 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 the situation is, or what the uh, working is, is um, Bethel Clark Fire Division. They run a part-time program just like we do. The only pr difference is, is their part-time program is only from six in the morning till six in the evening. After that, they have what's called an on-duty paid-for-call crew. Okay. Um, and those, those firefighter EMT paramedics are only paid when they're on a call. Um, it's what they have to deal with if they have, that, if they have the personnel on duty or not. Okay, all right, thank you. Where with our part-time program, we run a 24-7 system to where that way the station is manned 24 7. okay well thank you for explaining did you say in my office though that we respond to the calls if they don't have anybody respond to them for, for Bethel clark yes yeah if, they, if their medics already on a response just like if our medics already on a response uh we're uh, they'll call us from mutual aid or the closest whatever the closest division or, or department is they may either call us or they may call enan mm -hmm. or they may call uh, about the miami Whichever one is closer. Yeah, but that's normal. That's, yeah, that's, that's normal. It's, it's called the it's yeah. it's the countywide mutual aid package, uh, which we all belong to. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate the report. Mr. Bridge. And moving on with our city manager report, our police discussion with Sergeant. Thank you, Mayor, City Manager, Council. For the month of May. Uh, Reports by the trial deputies, we had 42. Reports by the Clark County deputy, we had 25 for a total of 67 for the month. Patrol 1,982 miles, 91 miscellaneous calls, and follow up investigations, we had 19. Under traffic information, 21 traffic stops, 14 citations, two OBIs. 11 driving under suspension, 10 parking citations. Uh, abandoned vehicles, uh, we've towed one, but it was in June. So we had none for May. Injury accidents, we had one. And under uh, arrest information, criminal adult arrest with 10, 12 charges with that, no juvenile arrest. And we had one warrant. And I did not see what we filed for any <coughs> Special interest, no assaults, no breaking and entering, which is fantastic. Uh, and one theft, that's really down from the last couple months. We've had several, so I was real pleased with this, at least the first three. Vandalisms, uh, we had three. 911 hangups, there were 11. Phone harassment, there was one. Domestic violence with assault, we had two. And verbal domestic, domestic violence, we had four. That's about average for this time of year. Uh, lockouts, there were two. Peace officer calls, we had three. Alarms, were two, and we had 31 assists. <coughs> then on Wednesday, <coughs> June 22nd, Deputy Sheila Cruz will be returning back uh, to New Corral for her regular assigned duties. Deputy Cruz sustained an injury while attending bike patrol training and was reassigned to light duty for several weeks. She was actually in jail for that. She's anxious to get back to their new club's job, patrolling the city in her car. And she's certified on the bike. She'll be using her bike also. Uh, Rupert and I will now have two deputies trained for bike patrol, and they will be out as much as possible. 
and I want you to feel free to wave them down and discuss any problems, concerns, or just say hi to them. Uh, that's the type of activity we need to find out what's going on in your community, or even the downtown businesses. We've had great success downtown. Sheila has. I mean, Rachel, sorry. We got them mixed up right at the first day they were hired, and it's always been like that. <laughs> short and tall. That's how we yeah. recognize okay, it. Short, okay, okay. So, I was hoping you weren't going to say hair, no hair. No. Okay. Short okay. Uh, all four of our new cloud deputies now have body cameras. Uh, they've been trained with those, and, and that's just, uh, all from Clark County Sheriff's Office. There was no cost to the city of New Carolina for that. And I want to remind you, uh, remember, if you think something is unusual or it just doesn't look right or you don't think it's right, it's time to be giving us a call. And that's, that's back in the community-oriented policing where we want you to help us so we can find where the problem lies. And, of course, if you have any information about criminal activities, please contact the Clark County Sheriff's Office at 328-2560. That's actually our uh, non-emergency number for dispatch. And with that, that concludes my report. Mr. Lowry. Thank you. I don't know what's going on, but I can't remember the last time I ever heard and seen so many positive comments about the deputies in this town. I mean, every week you ever talked about what a job they're doing. And I know we appreciate it. I want to thank you. Uh, Thank every one of you. I got the greatest appreciation for you. You'll never know. Uh, second thing is, are we moving in any direction towards car cams, cruiser cams, or where you refer to them? I know we was talking about, or I don't know if it was you or Randy talking about a possible grant or anything, and I haven't heard anything for a while. Well, we're still different. doing some catch up um, with equipment. Uh, our trunk equipment, which is what they keep in the back of the pro car. Uh, hopefully next week uh, or the following week, I'll be putting together a list of what is needed there. Some of our uh, 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 tools we use to get into cars with are years old. She's going to go get one so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, we have equipment, but it's so old and been used so many times, it's time to start replacing it. Um, so we're focusing on getting caught up. Currently, um, our biggest concern is another patrol car. And that's important because I don't want to take the patrol car we have now, the new one we have, and run it up 100,000 miles before the end of the year. Right. And we're not careful, that can happen. So we have at least uh, two or three shifts using that car right now. So to answer your question, we haven't got that far. Um, with, with us having just two deputies for a while, I did put us behind, and we'll get caught up, and that will be the first thing I ask for. Thank you, Rob. Uh, and once again, thanks to all the deputies who were here. Uh, we appreciate it. Well, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm very proud of our deputies up here. They've been out with the community. And Honestly, it's your own fault if you don't talk to them about your problems. Mr. Reynolds. Do, do we have any new information about body cameras? I know we discussed it a few times. Is that totally ruled out now because we can't support the bandwidth? No, they're, they're wearing them. They're just The bandwidth issue was transferring the data from point A to point B. So now they're just manually putting it on a CD-ROM and then taking it to the county. And actually, someone's coming out and downloading the information out here. Uh, it's, it's an extra step, but it's saving the drive thousands of dollars. Um, so it's worth it to have someone come out here. Where deputies are pretty good at, they know what calls they're on, when we're going to need the footage. We don't, we record everything, but not necessarily do we download it. Um, it's just not needed. Well, yeah, if you're just walking around, you don't want stop at all. So uh, actually, Lieutenant White, or uh, Sheila Cruz can burn a disc if we need it out here. So that's important. That's good. Fantastic. Because I know that was something that we all had to discuss for two years or so, so it's good to see it working. That's a, that's a big benefit for us. Uh, it, it relieves me somewhat that uh, we, can, we can see what the deputy's doing and 
and their professionalism, but now we have something for us that we're accused of doing wrong. Now, that's never happened here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I thought I'd tell a joke. <laughs> yeah. but, but actually, uh, it, it's a good tool for both of us. It really is. Um, you've got to keep in mind, um, never mind, what you see is not all the time that's going on. But it is a great tool. Have anything else? Mr. McIntyre. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Sergeant, I just wanted to echo Mr. Lowry's sentiments. Uh, your deputies do a great job. Uh, we, we spoke before the meeting. There was that incident where some of the deputies were in a situation where they'd have to go inside of someone else's house, particularly into a basement. Anytime you do that, I, I, I just can't imagine the guts that it takes to go into someone else's house as a law enforcement officer. Uh, that's incredibly difficult, let alone your tasks of pulling someone over and not knowing what's waiting for you in that driver's seat. That's also very difficult. So a lot of respect to your deputies. And also, I've been hearing a lot of positive feedback about the uh, bike patrols as well. Uh, citizens have been bringing this up. They love the idea. They think it's great. Uh, not only do they get to meet the officers, the deputies, but they also know someone's out there in the community. Um, so I'm really glad that we went the route with the, uh, the having, having the bikes, the bike patrol. So thank you to everyone who helped make that possible. Well, it's definitely like Rachel who's made all this possible. She's worked very hard. Uh, she has all my faith and trust. Uh, she does a good job. We all make mistakes, especially in this job. What you do in 10 minutes, people have six months to critique and try to find a, an issue. And we use every tool we can uh, to help us in those situations. She brought this in, I just want to show you. This, this is one of our unlock tools that's probably, I bet that's going on seven or eight years old. That's not supposed to be like this. <laughs> it's supposed to be straight with a little bend in it. So this is one of the tools that we have them, but they're, it's hard to use now. And the danger with this, if you see how bent it is, the danger with this is we can scratch someone's car. Now we have them fill out a form saying that we're going to do the best we can to try not to scratch your car. And if we see someone balk a little bit like that, well, then we just don't do it. Because we don't want the liability, you don't want the liability. But there's, there's tools out. This, this is a kit that I'm going to ask for. Uh, it comes with this and this wedge. Simply push the wedge in, in by the window. And since we've got these, they now have an airbag. And it's very thin. You slip it in a certain part of the car, and you pump it up, and we don't have to worry about scratch marks. There's a couple other things that they're doing, too. But just the kind of stuff, now we, we have some money we need to update, and, and this is important. If you lock your keys out, of your, out in your car, and you go try to get a tow truck to come up and do it, it's expensive. Yes, sir. How much is that? A new one to replace it or the air? Oh, uh, gosh, I, I think they were between $60 and $90 for the whole kit. Mr. Mayor. So, okay. Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Dredge. Uh, just and, and Sarge, just for information, I have some old metal coat hangers at home. <laughs> I'm more than happy to donate. Free There you go. I want to well, be we'll free. those on your call. I don't like my keys. I thought it's just saying <laughs> the liability is on the sheriff's office if they do scratch the car. Exactly. Why are we? <laughs> Mr. McLaughlin. There was an incident in New Carlisle a few days ago that was on Facebook with deputies from out of the city as well as our deputies with guns drawn and so forth. Could you reiterate what happened with that, if you would? Sure. Um, normally, you're not going to get that many deputies there, but I was on my way up here. Another supervisor was going his way up. We had our New Carlisle deputy. And a couple other deputies were in the area. We had a third party call, and a third party call is how far do you go with it? Okay, I, I mean, this third party call, they were telling us there was an a infant involved and possibly a man with a knife, uh, maybe some drugs. Uh, they kept making the scenario worse and worse. That's okay. Uh, when, when we arrived at the house, they refused to let us in. So not knowing what was going on, we surrounded the house in case somebody tried to come out. Uh, I got there, and, and uh, Sergeant Schultz also, 
We tried to talk to them. There was no talking to them. We actually spent almost two hours there trying to get them to let us in. Um, bottom line was they were told when we left. We felt that it took that much time for us to feel comfortable. There was not an infant inside. We actually had interviewed some people from inside and actually we had a couple come out. So we were comfortable. There wasn't an infant inside and we still did not know what was going on. So basically, uh, we obtained all the information we could, took a report on it, and told them the liability is here on you. We've done everything we can to get in this house. And you might ask about a search warrant. Uh, this is a particular time, since it was a third party call, uh, we didn't feel like a search warrant was practical at that time. And there was other calls holding it too. <coughs> Thank you. your question. Thank you. Yes, it does. Thank you. Mr. Reynolds? You can go first, Mr. Bridge. Okay. Well, I don't have a question. I just got a comment. So oh, you a question. I definitely say with the whole unlocking a car door, it's much appreciated. In December, <laughs> Mr. Bridge and I and Mr. Lindsay had the same problem. Someone had hip surgery, couldn't get out of the we car. I didn't have a problem. problem. And locked the door. <laughs> so <laughs> but you guys definitely. There's did. another way out. I had no problem at all. We prefer not to use that. Uh, oh, she yeah. was like, it might, we might bust your window open if you want to open it. I was like, we'll try this way first. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's too loud a noise disturbs everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And it was late at night. So we wouldn't want to disturb anyone. It was like midday. It was like six like o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> like, I also wanted to make a comment real quick. Oh, you don't mind, Randy. Um, on the fire department and the, and the deputies as well, they've also been showing a, a good presence down at the pool with the, with the young kids. And that's, that's extremely important to have that good relationship mm -hmm. to where they know who some of these people are that work for the city as far as the deputies and the fire chief and things like that. So a big thanks to both of you and your departments for, for doing that as well. It's much appreciated. Thank you. You'll find us more on the bike paths. Uh, you go like riding bikes, don't you? Yeah, I love it. I, I think it's great. I think we're getting a really good response from people. People, so far, I've only heard positive things. And people are curious and they have questions and they want to know, well, what happens if there's a call across the city? And I've explained to them that there's always another car on. Um, but I think, you know, as long as their questions have been answered, it's, it's all been positive. Great. And the good thing about that bike patrol is they can go in the bike path. I mean, if you're walking down the bike path, doing something you're not supposed to do and you see two headlights or a car coming, you know it's not a good thing. Right. But if you see a person on a bike from down far, you're not going to tell it's a cop. And they have the ability to kind of be a little more incognito back there. So I've got great responses. We've had a few negative comments, but that's to be expected. Right. And they usually send around calls, but the, 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 the response from the citizens has been fantastic. So keep up the good work. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, I think we're on the right track here. Uh, the, the funds we are receiving from the tax levy has helped this community and our department immensely. And for those people that have helped us, I just want to say thank you. We need this equipment to help you. And that's exactly what it was, the citizens passing that levy. Yes. Chief Trustee, did you have something? Yeah, uh, just to add on to, um, fire department and police departments always had that little rivalry going. We always, you know, back and forth a little bit. But with the, with the deputies that have been hired and put in the city, every one of our crews know that if we see Rachel or Cruz, if one of them come up, that we don't have a problem. It, I've never seen a, two divisions work together so well. And I've been doing this a lot of years and with a lot of different type of uh, police and fire. But they know that we've got their back. They know, we know they have ours. We, we see them showing up on calls that they weren't even called to. They were just in the area. They saw the medic go by. Hey, I'm going to come by and just check and make sure you guys are okay. That gives our crew such a sense of safety and just to know, hey, yeah, they're there. They may not come up to the scene. They may not even, you know, walk up where the patient is a lot of times, but we know they're there. And it's a tremendous, tremendous, just a, that peace of mind for our, for our crews to know that they're there. Great. I do have one more thing I want to mention that I, I left out, and I apologize for that. Uh, deputy Jolene Irons was the temporary deputy assigned up here, and Jolene, she did a fantastic job up here. Uh, she really liked working up here. She said it's a great community. Maybe someday I might get a chance to work up here. Uh, she's a great deputy also, and I just want to publicly thank her for going above and beyond too.
Thank you, Sergeant, for the excellent report, everybody. Keep up the good work. Now. Mr. Bridge. Um, just wanted to just give an update on the car situation. I know Sergeant Underwood had mentioned a little about the car. Um, just got the PO today to get the transmission changed in the Crown Vic that blew out. Um, Dave, our mechanic, is working on cleaning out the uh, charger that caught on fire. So we have the new vehicle, which I was just under the assumption that Cruz and Islander were driving that one. Um, and then we have the other charger that Lions use, and then Mieko. Yeah, Mieko. Yeah, Mieko. Sorry about that. And then I'm not sure what car. I'm assuming uh, Deputy Cruz replacement was driving the new SUV while she was here. Correct, correct me if I'm wrong, with the car situation the way it is now, you might see two deputies in a, in a single car. Yeah. Because of overlapping hours. Overlapping hours. From 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. But we have two cars available. So why are we got two minutes? We have the charger still and we have the new SUV. So we have two cars. It's operational. So we, we hope to get somebody out on the back and on the bike at those time periods. Well, I'm just saying, if you have a wrapping shift, we have two cars. So why are we have two deputies in a car if we have an extra car? Well, sometimes we we've actually have a deputy coming off and two deputies coming on. Mm -hmm. the, the shifts are staggered, gotcha. and that's what hurts is um, it's not like, <coughs> oh, at the sheriff's office, they have assigned shifts, first, second, third. Mm -hmm. We've staggered hours here, so sometimes we do have three. Yeah, like, um, for instance, on a Friday night, if I'm out on call or, you know, doing something or at the jail with a prisoner, and Lyon, Boswell's here in one car, mm -hmm. and then Deputy Lyons marks and serves at 11, there's only one car available because I'm at the jail. Gotcha. So it should only be few and far between if there's some kind of overlap. Um, on Friday nights, there's like a two-hour overlap where all three cars are actually out from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. Okay. So it's not it's not long periods of time. It's not entire shifts. But in those small circumstances, there are times that you, you know it's either that or the other deputy just sits at the substation and waits. Which you know I think we'd rather have two of them be in one car for calls. But yeah, it's it's usually a small period of time. Okay. All right. Uh, we will wait to see you get the car fixed. You're doing the best you can. I understand that. Yeah. Well, thank you for what you have done. What you're doing. Sure. So. It's we're we're going to make so. it work. We're on a roll. Thanks, Sergeant Underwood. <laughs> Mr. Bridge. Oh, moving on with Thank the uh, uh, city manager report. We got some informational items I'd like to discuss. Again, this is on there. Uh, three smoke detectors. Thank you, uh, Chief Trustee, for giving us an update. Apparently, we got about 50 left. So there's no age restrictions on that. If you know anyone that needs a smoke detector in their house, give the uh, fire department a call, and they'll be happy to come in and install it for you. Um, sure a lot of you have noticed the playground equipment that's sitting out there. We're still waiting on the mulch to come in. Again, thank you to you and your uh, organization for helping us get that. It's going over real well. Even though they can't use it, they're excited to start using it. Um, there was a delay on the mulch delivery, so we're trying to get that squared away. So as soon as that mulch is here, our city guys will put it in there and spread it out. We are going to have an uh, opening ribbon cutting ceremony to open that. So um, we'll have more information that as it comes along. And then the smoking restriction size signs have been placed at various parks. If you get them in it, um, go check them out. I have actually talked to a few people that go to these parks. They said they love them, so it's working out the way that we all wanted it to. You're more welcome to smoke in the park. Just keep it away from uh, kids playing. Yeah. Absolutely. Mr. Bridge, just a quick question. Do you have, uh, Mr. Mr. Peston, uh, what kind of mulch we're going to be getting? Is it going to be the typical wood mulch or is it going to be recycled no. rubber? It's like engineered wood fiber. That's all I remember. I've had a lot of people ask. Yeah, it's yeah, just it's engineered wood fiber. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Mr. Craybacher. Uh Randy, I have a question for you. Sure. And this has to do with the farmer's market. Mm -hmm. I got a phone call from a, a citizen. Her name is Kathy. Mm -hmm. And she's in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. She said it's great you know, getting around to the city. You know, with all the wheelchair ramps, she goes, you know, other cities she's lived in, there's always been places where she couldn't go. However, she tried, she wanted to go down to the farmer's market the other day, and she said that she could not get there because she didn't feel like she was safe. You know, um, now I wasn't here Saturday, so I don't know what it was. I'm going to tell you, her description was, is that you would, you'd have to actually be on the street to go to see that. And so, but there's traffic on the street, so she didn't feel like she was safe. Her question was, you know, could we block the street off at those time periods? Uh, I do remember when the farmer's market first started, we tried to do that. And for some reason, it got away from 
do you know why we can't do that? Because we're not going to, we can't close the state route 235 down for three and a half hours every single Saturday. I'll tell you exactly what happened Saturday in regards to the wheelchair. Um, ever since that farmer's market's been open, especially in the couple years that I was directly involved with it, there's a standard rule, a strict rule that these, how these vendors set up on the sidewalk is they are to leave at least a three, a three foot or more clearance so people in wheelchairs can navigate the sidewalk still. What happened this first opening day is that it, um, the certain organizations didn't communicate to the vendors how they needed to set up. And what happened was we had a few vendors actually with a table over the whole sidewalk. Mm -hmm. You know, I know exactly who you're talking about because I was there and I saw that there's two of them there. Right. They, they can get on the sidewalk because we have curb cuts. They just couldn't go down the sidewalk. So um, it will not happen again. Um, please tell her to visit the uh, farmer's market next weekend and that will be fixed. Okay. Um, but we've never had that issue before up until yesterday. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Council, any other questions? Mr. Bridger, I have one on the same subject. Is there, and I know this has been brought up before, mm -hmm. of adding a second crosswalk. I don't know if you guys remember talking yeah. about that yeah. near world, the World Threads area across the main. Is that a possibility at all? We, the, we, don't have the, we, don't, we don't have the people crossing the street to warrant it. We had, a couple years ago, I was a planning director, and TCC had come out and did a study for us at a mid-walk crosswalk, and they actually sit up there with people with counters. We don't have, we don't have the foot traffic to warrant it. Okay. We just don't. All right, Mr. McIntyre. Since since we brought it up with the <coughs> farmers market and the garage sale, big thanks to everyone for the city who helped out. Big thanks to the business coalition, Western Clark County Business Coalition, for working on this. Pretty good turnout. A lot of neat things at the farmers market. Someone had a loom there, and he was doing the loom. Mm -hmm. it was fantastic. And with the garage sale, I talked to a guy just on that day, that Saturday. He made four hundred dollars. Four hundred dollars just sitting in your front yard, and people buy the stuff you don't want anymore. That's yep. fantastic. That's money in the pocket for people in the city. Um, so thanks to the business coalition and everyone um, and your, of your staff who help help them in that matter. Sure. Yeah. And the community garage sale just every year just gets bigger and bigger. And you know, next year I've already probably determined there there will be there's going to be no call to city and register your address. It's just I would like to have it the third week in June every single year. You know what day it's going to be on and just have a free for all with it. If you look at other municipalities, how to do that, that's exactly how they do that. I mean, they just have a certain day of the weekend. You know when it is. You don't call. You don't register your address. You just simply have an app, have a yard sale. I drove around Saturday, and I noticed a lot of people who had yard sales were not registered on our list. So um, I think the crucial aspect of that is having on a set weekend every single year. Right. Mr. Mr. Reynolds. I think that we all should do owe Mr. McIntyre. Thank you for the idea, because he brought this up in 2013. And it just continues to become a success. I was I, I was up in Columbus on Saturday, but on my way through the town, I probably saw 30 garage sales. So, thank you. Any other questions for the city manager? All right, y'all finished, sir? I'm good. All right, <clears throat> get moving on here. Okay, so city manager's report, and we are moving on to comments from the members of the public. If anyone has any comments, we would ask you to please go to the podium. Ready? Okay, moving on to committee reports. None tonight. Let's see resolutions. None. And ordinances. Lots. <laughs> Lots. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, Mr. Collier. I would start by saying that on tonight's agenda, we have four ordinances that require action this evening, and five ordinances will just be introduced for action at our next meeting. Thank you, sir. Ordinance 16-19, action tonight, 6-2016, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for the purchase of a used combination sewer jetting slash vacuum truck and sewer camera. Council. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. Motion to adopt ordinance 16 next. Second. And an explanation of this <coughs> ordinance. This would be a capital purchase for our wastewater uh, department. I talked to our service director, I mean the wastewater superintendent today, uh, Harvey Simmons. I wanted to reiterate the fact with him that this is a crucial, crucial purchase. Uh, I asked him about what percentage of the time does the thing not work. He gave me a 75% of why sometimes it doesn't work. When it does work, you have to caress it. 
Um, this is a crucial aspect to the overall operations of the wastewater because how that works is if you try to get into a sewer line, and let, I'm just for easy conversation example purposes, say you're at the city building and you go into that hole right there to try to clear out the pipe, and you realize there was a clog four or five houses down. Well, the last thing you want to do is go down and tear up the road there. So the camera that's going to be involved in conjunction is we're actually get in there and tell you where this clog is at without having to do any additional digging. Um, and then it obviously uses force to either push it out or suck it back in. Um, it is a big purchase. It is used. Um, I know there is a lot of discussion about that used, uh, used purchase. But for orders to get a new one, you're looking at triple the price. Um, this is, I think, is a 95 or 96. It will last us, knock on wood, years to come. Um, so it's in front of you guys tonight. So with uh, what you're saying is, is from the last meeting we'd had, we seen the dinosaur of the one we have now. This ultimately is yes, it's, a, it's an expensive, you know, not as a comparison to a new one, but it's going to save us time, money, materials, mm -hmm. all the above, man hours to get a job done. Yeah, and I, I do remember, and I'm not expecting you to remember this, the dollar amount. I did do remember signing off on a PO that we actually had to pay somebody to use their super jet to come in um, and get work done. Can we get anything out of your own to just junk or scum or do anything with it? It's 49 years old, right? Yeah. Push it off the hill. Scrap, okay. scrap metal, scrap maybe. Scrap metal, it maybe, but you're not. We're not going to be able to turn around and sell it on gut deals. I'm not too sure. We'll scrap everything. We'll get every penny we can out of it. Okay. But it's something that we're not going to put on gut deals and try to resell. I just don't see that happening. Mr. Reynolds. Mr. Reynolds. I, I definitely think that it's needed, but I think we need a brand new one. And I mean, I, I said that earlier. Like, I, I don't want to replace something with another city mm -hmm. usage because I mean, look, we just bought the. Morefield Township cruiser not two years ago, and now we're not using it. You know, I mean, I just think it's kind of sad that we're going to use something or buy something that someone else has used. So we don't know. You could break down, and now we just wasted 150, and now we have to go buy a new one or contract out. I think we should have definitely looked at a new one. I know that you always have concerns with that. And you know, I'm one of those physical, I am probably one of the most physically conservative members of this council, here, <coughs> and I hate spending money. I really do. But I think that we probably should have actually purchased something new. What's a new? I, 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 I think everybody would love to have a new one. Mm -hmm. To me, as a city manager, forecasting that much <coughs> out, given the current state of the wastewater facility itself, it's very, it's aging. That's that's hard. That's hard to go out 10, 15 years. <coughs> oh, you know, I um, agree. Do we use this that often? Like, yeah, I, I would assume we do because it, it looks. I mean, like I said, like. Vietnam was raging when that thing first got into service. I mean, yeah. so, I mean, it's, it's, it's older than my parents. <laughs> you know, it's twice the age yeah. of me. Uh, I just think we need a new one. I just I don't think it's a, a matter of if we need one or not. I just think it's a matter of yeah. we want to buy someone else's garbage. Sure. Can I ask a question? Mr. McLaughlin. That's up to council service. No. Let me get their questions through and then we'll get you. Mr. McLaughlin. The uh, camera. Cost of the sewer camera is not included in the price used the sewer jetting truck. Do we have any idea? It's all inclusive, what's ever on the order. I don't have the ordinance in front of me because it was introduced last time. I think it's up for 120000 or something. Not to exceed 150000 Not to exceed 150000 mm -hmm. yeah. But that is the cost for the car and the camera, the truck and the camera. Okay. And what, what year again is the one that we're proposing to I'm thinking purchase? like a 95 or 96. 95 or 96. Mm. Mr. Are you done, Mr. Yes, Lawson, I'm sorry. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Lindsay. Mr. Bridge, the, uh, you have here that the, uh, says here the city manager to be and hereby is authorized to proceed with acquiring a used combination sewer jetting vacuum truck and sewer inspection camera. By signing the necessary purchase contracts financing, not to exceed one hundred fifty thousand dollars. How much do they want for that truck? I think the truck itself is just uh, just one hundred thousand or something. One hundred one, one hundred two. And what year is that? Did you say? Ninety five, ninety six. Do you know any history on this vehicle that 
Have, have you or how we talked to them as far as well, the type Kippen. of repairs or anything they've had to do to it? Well, of course. Is it functioning? <laughs> Basically is what I want to know. I mean, we bought a cruiser, you know, that we thought was good, and I was against it. The cruiser it, was a I fluke accident. I mean, that was a shotgun yeah. shorting on the wire. The car itself is still fine. Sure. The engine's fine. And we actually made $3,000 profit off of that car as well. Um, the sewer jet situation, Howie has been in constant contact with the city of Union who's selling that to us, and it's right outside of Cleveland. Um, they will take the purchase price that we're getting for them. They're buying a new one. Um, the truck, if the truck wasn't a good buy, it wouldn't even be in front of you guys right now. So Mr. Kiko has done his due diligence by looking at the ins and outs of this truck. There is no guarantee. And then the balance of that would go for the camera, for the sewer camera, the balance of the 150. Yeah, but you're not going to spend the whole entire 150. The cameras itself maybe is 20, 25. So we're looking at 130 then? Mm -hmm. Around there. Six I guess camera. my next question is why do we have 150 in front of us then? Not Buffer. To I mean, it's not to exceed. you know, just in case? Yeah, because the last thing you need to do is if it comes out to be 132 and you put it in for 130, do we want to really go through another set of two readings and delay the process by another month and 15 days? So that just gives you me the power to sign the contract. It doesn't mean it's going to get purchased. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. It just gives me the power to sign the contract. Are you finished, Mr. Lindsay? And what have you priced the new one, or how are you? One of you? It's over. What 300, is the new it's one? Over three hundred thirty. It's over three hundred thousand dollars just for the new truck new itself, truck. plus additional cost for the camera. And you said the camera is what twenty thirty thousand dollars. I'm sure there's different kinds of models you can get, but the one I've been told is about 2025. Okay. So it's 338. It was 338,000. It was well over 330,000 dollars. Uh, it was like 338. I forget the rest, but that's what mm -hmm. Howie and I had spoken sure. about. <coughs> Mr. Lindsay, are you finished? Um, thank you, sir. Yeah. Mr. McIntyre. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Bridge, M, in this ordinance, you have that the sewer jetting truck is in the approved wastewater capital improvement plan and included for purchase in the approved 2016 annual appropriations budget. Um, so by that, it, it was within, when we had that budget in front of us and we approved it, it was a line item or part of whatever it was for capital purchases that we approved. There's already $80,000 of this you guys already approved by. We approved for how much? Well, CIPs, 30 one year, and then, well, the new CIP is not done yet, right? <laughs> The new CIP has got 50 in it, so. Mm -hmm. So this $150,000 was something we can anticipate based on that 2016 appropriations budget that we had passed, and um, this is broken down over time, right? I'm sorry. What was the idea? This $150,000 is, is something that we had already approved this amount for. You, not, you haven't approved the whole amount. You approved the, the capital CIP, CIP for this year. Oh, okay. And that CIP is including the $39,000 that we're going to put towards this. We have another CIP coming up three months before the adoption of the final budget, and there's another going to be $50,000 in there for capital projects. Okay. Yeah. I understand. Thank sure. you. Sorry, I didn't hear your question. No, that's fine. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Bridge and Council, I also spoke with Howie, and I mean, I agree with you. I think he's done his homework on it. I mean, I guess, you know, you never know what could happen, but I do remember him saying that it was, it was always stored inside, too, which is a big thing, mm -hmm. and, I, and uh, some other parts were, were replaced on it sure. recently. Uh, I share Ethan's concern as well, but I think <coughs> dumping a quarter over a quarter, well over a quarter of a million dollars is just, I mean, for me personally, it's not something that the city should be doing right now. It's tough to forecast out for 10 years. Right. I'll be honest with you, if this was coming through the water plant, the water plant's been pretty good shape functionality wise, I wouldn't have an issue buying a new one. Since this is going to be out of our wastewater plant, wastewater plant's got some major, it's, it's old. I mean, it's aging. You know, so you never know what's going to happen with with is something big going to break there. So, granted, I don't like spending money. Period, and this is a definite need, not a want. Um, I would love to have a 4.2 million dollar home, but I just can't afford it. So I got to get one that I can afford, and that's the same situation we're in now. This is something we need. You know, it's from my what I've been told by Mr. Kipko has been, been very well taken care of, um, but. A municipality like ours who has the income that we have, we kind of got to do what we got to do. In this case, the best scenario for us to go forward is to buy these trucks. Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Bridge, you said that the, this is coming out of the wastewater uh, monies mm -hmm. fund. 
Mm -hmm. And the wastewater plant's in dire need of repair? Is it, did I misunderstand you? I'm or? not saying it's in dire need of repair now. I said it's an aging facility. Okay. Okay, aging facility. Mm -hmm. That means at any time something there can break and cost us thousands of dollars to repair or fix. Or at some point we're going to have to replace this plant, correct? Yes, and at some point in time we're probably going to take out loans to do that. Even if we had, if we even if we didn't buy this back, buy the sewer jet and something broke down there, we're still going to take out the loan to fix it. If something a hundred thousand dollar repair comes into that place, we're going to have to take out OW. OWP loan or pretty pretty quick. And that, that could that could equate to what a couple of motors or what the could rates a, or something like could that. Be, could be a lot of things. It could be a little the spinner thing. It could be a bar screen. It could be how we put our sludge. I mean, there's a slew of things that can go wrong down there. Yeah. All right. Thank you, sir. Sure. Council, any <coughs> questions, Mr. Craven? Just run real quick. Mm -hmm. You know, you you and I and and how you you know, I I, I I've sat in the hearing of the EPA telling what's coming down the road and a lot of the small communities are going to get hit and they're going to get hit hard by the federal government mm -hmm. and they're not going to give you anything to do anything to do it but the EPA is going to tell you basically you're going to need a new plant mm -hmm. because our plant won't be able to hold it and that's exactly what I said you know, our plant will not be able to hold it so down the road you know we're going to be hurting and that's why I was looking at especially our budget you know on the our income is not you know we're going to have for price rate. You know, it's going to be a price hike sooner or later. Oh, rate increase? There's actually a rate increase coming in March. Of, yeah, 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 well, it's going to have to come in. Well, the, that sometime. ordinance was passed three years ago. I think it had a series of three rate increases. The last rate increase on that ordinance was in March of this of 20. Well, there's one in March of 2016. I think there's one coming up in March of 2017. Okay. And then after that, there are no scheduled raises. So you will have an ordinance in front of you around March 17. That's going to have right. another set of raises, or it's going to just say it's going to increase two or three percent per year. Right. Uh, it's an enterprise fund, so you have to get your. It needs to be self-sustaining. So right. if the EPA comes and says you have to do this, and they don't give us any money to do that, unfortunately, it goes back to your citizens. It goes back to your income. Absolutely. It has to go back to you. Sure. So I have no problem with used equipment as long as used equipment has been well maintained mm -hmm. over the years. If it's 40 years old, I have a problem. I won't drive a 40-year-old car. Sure. Or I will drive a 10-year-old car. You know, and, and I will get a toral change. Mm -hmm. So I'm just, you know, I have no problem with. Sure. It's with been a tough one for me. It's spending money. I've talked to Ms. Harris about it a few times. It comes down to it is. It's definitely a need, and that's just where. Yeah. yeah. I have no problem with it. Sure. I do it all the time. Council, any other questions? Mr. Brest, did you have a quick comment? I was wondering if uh, any sort of analysis was done right. like a five-year, how many times the truck is actually going to sit a lot or does it, it sits a lot because it doesn't work. It sits a lot because it doesn't work. 75% of the time they can't get it to work. So therefore we have to either outsource that and bring somebody else in and pay to use their sewer jet or we dig a million holes to be find what we need to find. I, I just wondered, was there a comparison of um, I would probably say no, but in this particular case, the cost to rent per se versus the cost of owner is going to, you're going to get your more benefit off of owning the piece of equipment other than renting. I like your mentality though. All right. Any other questions? Yeah. And we'll move on. Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Collier, please. When you're ready. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. I agree with Mr. Reynolds. A new one would be preferable, but yes. Mr. Mr. Reynolds. No. Mr. Lindsay. No. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. McLaughlin. It's a needed piece of equipment that we have to have for the city, so yes, I would, please. Mr. Craybar. Yes. Ordinance 16-19 passes 5-2. Who went through that?
Kirk Lowry and then Whenever you're ready, Mr. Collier. Here with me here, I'm shuffling all this paperwork. Ordinance 16-20, action this evening. An ordinance amending chapter 238 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding the division of fire. Mr. Lowry. Second. And an explanation of this ordinance. Uh, Chief Trussie had came to me um, really concerned about getting getting people to work on holidays because of how we used to pay. Um, so in front of you is a ordinance to increase the fire pay on holidays only and you have the holiday list there um, to actually pay them an actual time and a half opposed to just increasing their pay by a dollar. Please keep in mind that our fire and EMS staff go to work on a holiday when the rest of us are with our family. And I'll be honest with you, if I was a fire and EMS person, I'd really think twice about leaving my family on a holiday just to get a dollar more an hour. So we have to take care of those who take care of us. I highly recommend the council does uh, pass this ordinance. Council, Mr. Reynolds. Uh, as, as everyone knows, I wasn't too particularly thrilled. When we had first hired you, I'd made statements about it. and. We've talked multiple times since then. I think you're doing an excellent job. Again, I think that you're, you're doing fantastic work. And I, for one, don't you know, I'm, I work for the state of Ohio, and I don't like the fact that sometimes I have to do stuff on holidays. I can imagine what you guys have to do, you know, risking your potential lives uh, to, you know, going down for a building or helping someone who might have distress. So I'm definitely for you. So I think it's something we need to adopt. So and you're doing a great job, Chief. I encourage you all the time now. So keep up the good work. Council, any other comments? Mr. Collier. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. Craybach. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Ordinance 1620 passes 7 to 0. Thank you, sir. Chattering. We're freezing over here. It's killing us. Ordinance 16 21, action this evening. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with the city of Springfield, Ohio, for the purpose of continuing, continuing to provide dispatching service to the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. Council. Mr. Mayor, Mr. McLaughlin. I move we accept ordinance 16 21 as written. Second. And an explanation of this ordinance, this is a yearly ordinance we do. We contract out with the city of Springfield for our dispatching services. Um, they haven't raised the price on race. They haven't raised the price, I think, in the last two years. So they have agreed to keep the same price. Um, I don't have any complaints for the city of Springfield doing our dispatching. I haven't heard anything negative from the folks who actually have to use that service as far as chief. So again, I uh, recommend council pass that ordinance. Council, any questions or comments? Mr. Collier, when you're ready. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. Craybock. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes, sir. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Ordinance 16-21 passes 7 to 0. Ordinance 16-22E, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. An ordinance amending ordinance 12-49E regarding the incentive agreement, RD Holder Oil Company Incorporated, and declaring an emergency. Council. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Reynolds. We'll be adopt ordinance 16-22E. Second. 
and expedition of this ordinance. Um, back in 2012, a lot of you were on council back then, um, there was an tax, I mean, incentive agreement for the already holder for relocating its corporate headquarters here. Um, every year, uh, Lowell and I actually go to the county to uh, basically grade or say yay or nay to his compliance in terms of the county agreement. Um, he has historically satisfied our agreements based off the income tax. As long as Mr. Holder is down there expanding his business and bringing jobs into the city, I think that we should grant every kind of exception to allow the incentives to go into his newly created Holder Logistics. So there's another ordinance in front of the council tonight that I do highly recommend that is passed. Mr. Mayor, Mr. McLaughlin. We were at that meeting. There's actually about 30 people in this committee, and they, they not only do Mr. Holder, of course, other tax incentives throughout the county is all done on one day. And I was very impressed with the people that were there and the companies that have come into Clark County mm -hmm. and are putting more jobs on for Clark County. Uh, there was one in the eastern part of the county. They're bringing in another 90 people here. In the, uh, so they've far exceeded what they need to do. And Mr. Holder, as we all know, we've toured his facility and so forth. What an attribute to the city of Nicolau. And it's great that we have him here. And he has provided everything that we've asked for in the past. Thank you. Mr. Lowry. He was first. Oh, Mr. McIntyre. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, this, one of the things that, that came up with this incentive agreement, um, there's a list of, of obligations that the Artie Holder Company has to maintain uh, for this agreement to continue. One of them is they have to maintain a payroll above uh, a certain amount of money, so that means they have to keep people employed. And I, I think that's a great, um, a great part of this initiative, uh, to make sure that we have people working here, uh, we have e people from the city working here, from the town, um, and also their income tax dollars will come back and help keep the city running. It's really a great point of pride for me when I'm going down 235 to get on Route 4 and there's an Artie Holder truck. Yeah, I remember when they moved in here, what a great asset for the community. Um, probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest, uh, businesses to move in. And, and I know that a few on council were really instrumental. I think, Lowell, I think you did a lot to, to really push to make sure we could get Artie Holder here and a former city manager as well. So it's really great that we have Artie Holder and uh, it's been a great relationship and great incentives and obligations for them to stay here. So I'm in favor of this piece of legislation. Thank you, Mr. McIntyre. Mr. Lauer? Yeah. How many people are employed or are you? I, I do not. I only want to speculate. Okay, do you remember, because Lowell, because they actually gave that number while we were there. I don't I want to say 40. I think it's probably around 25 to 30. Yeah, okay. I was going to say Within his company, he has other locations. He has, okay. I think, probably 50 to 70 people. So I think they mentioned about 50, because in my head was 49. But they might have 25 to 26. They have 27 down. I just saw, when he was, after the uh, meeting, he, he was, was walking, walking and, I was, and he stopped and we spoke. And it was 27 here, and then he has this Lancaster building, which has a few. And I see them going to Columbus. Mm -hmm. So nice. I'm like, oh. And it says, like, oh, on the back of it. I'm yeah. like, good deal. <laughs> no, they have, I mean, if you come from the South, if I have friends that come to go to World Threads, and they're pretty impressed with coming into South Town, because you have the fitness center, which is a cool building. To look at, and then you see Artie Holder, which is a cool building to look at as well. Oh, so our yeah. southern interest this town for people coming up to date is pretty impressive. <laughs> Holder, Artie Holder Logistics. Where's the main office? Out of Artie Holder Oil. Okay, that's yeah, yeah. Know. That's the only reason. It doesn't state that in here anywhere out there. Oh well, no. Okay. If he wasn't, if he wasn't headquartered here, okay. he wouldn't. That's what we wouldn't even be talking. But yeah. Thank you. Nice observation, there, sir. Well, I just said it in the sure. but it didn't say where the where it was. I, I assumed it was here, but I didn't know. For yeah. Any sure. other questions, Council? Mr. Collier, when you're ready, please. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yeah. Mr. McLaughlin. Absolutely. Mr. Craver. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. <laughs> yes. Ordinance 16-22E passes 7 to 0. Mr. Mayor, if I may. Mr. McGuire. Just to add to that addendum, uh, to be able to get businesses to come into your area and your community, this is the type of thing that needs to be done for any new businesses to come in as long as you are in. You're not going to sneeze on us, are you, Mr. Britson? No, I'm sleeping. <laughs> as long as you're in the proper zoning for it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
The whole city is an enterprise zone, to be honest with you. Um, the whole city is, but it depends on what type of business you have. They're not going to give tax credit to a dog kennel. You know, it's, no. it's your light, it's your manufacturing uses. That's what they're trying to get. So it really depends on where you know that town. But if you got a big business, you want to come in here, we will gladly rezone for you if you need that done. <laughs> gladly rezone for you. All right, moving on, Mr. Collier, when you're ready, sir. The remaining of these ordinances are just introductions. Ordinance 16 23, introduction tonight, public hearing action on 7516. An ordinance amending 16. It's, it's an ordinance amending. Ordinance 16 15, regarding the disposal of unproductive city property. Ordinance 16 24, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 7516. An ordinance granting the Dayton Power and Light Company its successors and assigns an electric franchise in the city of New Carlisle, state of Ohio, for a period of five years, automatically renewing for an additional period of two years, unless notice is given, commencing on the effective date of this ordinance. Ordinance 16-25, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 7516. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement for professional accounting and consulting services. Ordinance 16-26, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 7516. An ordinance adopting the tax budget for the city of New Carlisle, Ohio for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2017 and submitting same to the auditor of Clark County, Ohio. Ordinance 16-27, introduction public hearing and action on 7516. An ordinance authorizing the placement on the ballot of a tax levy renewal for public health purposes. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Moving on with uh, other business. Uh, city offices will be closed on Monday, July 4th, 2016. And that means that the next council meeting will be on that Tuesday night, July the 5th, here at 7 p.m. Foam Frenzy, sponsored by National Trails Park and Recreation, will be uh, on Friday, June 24th at 5 p.m. And that's here at Smith Park. Wellville, Saturday, June 25th, 2016, in conjunction with the Farmer's Market. And once again, the Farmer's Market will be uh, every Saturday downtown New Carlisle starting at 9 a.m. till 12 noon and the Chautauqua concert there will be another one here in, at Smith Park stage on June 26 starting at 6 30 p.m. Mayor I have one other issue I want to share with council. Okay. As clerk of council I received a letter from a Kelly, Kelly A. Bartlett of 533 Glen Avenue here in New Carlisle. Uh, and the letter is a, is a uh, announcing her intention to circulate an, an initiative petition for an income tax credit. I'll read that to council and the audience. Dear Mr. Carter, please see and enclose a true and exact reproduction of the initiative I intend to circulate regarding the proposal of the income tax credit for residents to pay an income tax to another municipality. Thank you for your consideration. Sincerely, Kelly A. Bartlett. And uh, I actually have a copy of the proposed language for the initiative petition. Uh, obviously, this is just in a, a notice of an intention. It doesn't mean that we have a petition yet, but it sounds like she's very serious about this. And how this works, for, for council and myself is that those, those petitions would be obviously first filed with me as clerk of council and they would require that there would be no less than 10% of the number of persons voting in the city that would sign this petition. It had to be that number. And that's based on the number of people who last voted in the last preceding governor, gov gubernatorial election. What that number is, I have no idea. If when a petition is presented to me, 
then I would contact the Board of Elections to indicate how many signatures there would be needed. And then it would just go through the process as dictated by our charter. I don't think they would even have time to put it on for the November because I introduced the health levy. You have to go through a series of processes to get this on and don't quote me on any of this. Um, but you got all that stuff has to be 90 to the Board of Elections 90 days before the election. Um, so I don't know. I don't know when it's, when it's going to be on the ballot because you, I don't know if it's going to happen on. So if it goes on the November, if it doesn't make it on the November election, then her 10 percent is going to go off the November election. So therefore, she's going to need a lot more signatures. But this is a concern for like reciprocity, basically, is what she's going. I, to yes, I agree. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we tried. So basically, if I, like you live in Dayton, Santa it's really going. Yes. It, it would hurt our. It would hurt the city. Pretty you know bad. what I mean? I mean, it, it would it would do a lot of. It would, it would put a financial burden on the city because we don't have a lot of people who stay here and work. They go out to work. Out but to you've work. got to have two to play ball, right? I mean, it's, it's not something no, that we because can because what do we do we if, do if she pays City of Dayton 1.25% or for easy math, if City of Dayton is 1.5%. She pays that City of Dayton. She owes City of New Carlisle nothing. Here, here's what I would suggest for council to consider. I, don't just, quote me on it. Just sit and wait to see if we actually get presented with the petitions and then all right. those questions can be answered by right. the mm -hmm. law director. I mean, we're just. But if it were to go on and pass, it might do some, might hurt the budget pretty, pretty bad. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. Uh, Mr. Collier, when did you receive that letter? What's the date on it? June 17th. June 17th? Correct. Okay. Okay. Council, any other questions, comments? Mr. Rhodes? Uh, I had spoken to Mr. Bridge earlier today about this. Uh, I'm actually going to be submitting this to him. It's a resolution uh, encouraging the city of New Palau to join the Ohio Open Checkbook, uh, sponsored by the state treasurer's office. Uh, our city charter allows us to do this, and it just needs to be one member. So I'm going to be introducing this, and I think it's something that over the next two weeks, you know, while we, it only needs one reading. So over the next two weeks, uh, if you guys don't mind doing a little bit of digging in and bringing your concerns and. I'm hoping someone from the treasurer's office will be here to answer the questions as well. Can you make can you make that happen by chance? Well, we can get somebody from the treasurer's oh, office. Oh yes, I've, I've, I've been in minutes. contact with Frank. Okay. And so, okay. You say you have a resolution? Yes, I have it typed up and everything and signed according to the charter. So I just have to hit it, submit it to Randy, who then submits it to Lynette, who then submits it to you. Okay. According to the charter. I just, I just <laughs> I missed part of your discussion on my tape. I just want to make if yes. I, if if he could scan that to me just so I can. Yeah. Do you, you have a Are word document of that? Yes, but it has to go to you signed according to the uh, uh, charter. So, or the rules of council when you submit it. Yeah, rules of council. But I can send you a word document too. Send that. Right. I don't want to retype it to send to Lynette yeah. to review. And then once you say yay or nay, then we can use your, exa your existing hard copy. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll send that one tonight. And I don't plan on doing, introducing that on the agenda. I think if you want to break rules of council, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, so I won't put it on the agenda. You can break rules of council, but we do need to have that step done by one that for the charter. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll just give it to you and then send it to you. And then if I just put it on like, mm -hmm. the agenda for the next meeting. Sounds so, good. All right. Sounds good. Yep. Mr. McIntyre. Yeah, some sad news. Um, I don't know if you were paying attention to some of the news that happened over this uh, past week, but there's a young man who died uh, in Trotwood. Um, swimming in a rock quarry. Uh, well, there's lots of ponds and things like that. We all like to jump in and swim, especially when it's hot. You may not know it, but rock quarries are one of the Sorry. worst, most dangerous places you can swim in. Uh, it, people used to, to mine there and dig the place out, and uh, it looks like a nice stagnant pond, but there's a big undertow, there's a heavy current, and you can get sucked down before you even know it, and you can't fight those waters. So the first thing I want to say is, Please do not swim in a rock quarry. I don't know if there's a lot of people here tonight who would have that problem, but if you happen to be watching at home, just don't swim in a quarry. It's not worth it. You, you can die very easily, even if you're a very strong swimmer. The second thing I want to bring up is because it's summertime, a lot of people are be going to the lake and a lot of people are going to be going out on the water. Um, spending some summers at Indian Lake, I will tell you one thing, water and alcohol do not mix. Uh, if you're going out on a boat, do not drink. Don't go cabrewing with your canoes and, and, and take alcohol. Just don't drink near the water. Um, it can end tragically. It all takes is, is one second, just like in a car. But in a car, if you go off the road and, and into a field or something like that, you can still walk away. In a boat, if you fall into the water, that's it. 
or if you crash your boat into someone else's boat, that's it. So uh, don't swim in rock quarries, and please do not drink and get near the water. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Matthew Boss, Mr. McLaughlin. I have a uh, comment. I would like to wish uh, Mr. Gene Collier a happy birthday tomorrow. Wow. He said he's going to be 39 again. Hey, so I'd like to give him a little hand. For the 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 he said he'll bring all his birthday presents to the next council meeting <laughs> so we can share. Yeah, we'll it's one for each year. I hope it's money. <laughs> Mr. Lindsay. <laughs> Mr. Lindsay. I just want to uh, add on to uh, Mr. McIntyre's comment. The uh, the quarries, most of them around here are posted, that you're not allowed to swim into, into them, or in them. The, uh, so I would assume if somebody's in there and they're swimming, if PD would happen to see them uh, in Clark County, I'm sure they would be uh, talked to or something. I don't believe we have any quarries here in New Carlisle anywhere. Right outside of town. Sure we do. Sure we'll do well, yeah, that's, yeah, Green County. Right. Uh, and and the uh, oh, I forgot my train of thought. But that, okay. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. Any other comments, <laughs> questions before we move on for the evening? Mr. Baird, nothing. You look like you have something to say. Uh, All right. right. So our executive session done tonight. And unless anybody has anything else, Mr. Mayor, we adjourn.